Hello and welcome to Module 5, Modeling and Simulation. Today we will discuss modeling advanced systems. We have four modules that we'll go through today. The first model will be a simple call center and then followed by an enhanced call center. The third model will be enhanced call center with more output performance measures and the fourth call center will include inventory components. So starting with model 5.1, the simple call center. The setup will include one phone number for customers to call into. This will have 26 different trunk lines where one line will be needed for each call. Regardless of whether the call is an incoming or outgoing call, or whether somebody is talking or on hold, the call can be used for any of them, but cannot be used for two calls at the same time. Arriving call finding no free trunk lines gets busy signal or goes away. And so we want to count the number of such rejected calls. Calls will arrive with the intervals with an exponential distribution of 0.857 minutes, and the first call will arrive at time zero. There will be three incoming call types. The initial recording to decide will be a uniform distribution, and the three call types are tech support at 76% probability, sales at 16%, and order status at 8%. For the tech support calls, product type 1, 2, or 3 with each respective percentages and they need to have a qualified tech support person. So there are two of these such tech support people for type one, three of them for product type two, and three for product type three. There is no crossover to another type. So in other words, a tech support person for type one cannot handle a product support for product two, of type two. Separate FIFO queues for each type, and remember from previous lectures, FIFO stands for first in and first out. And the conversion time will be a triangular distribution of 3, 6, and 18 minutes for all types. After the call, then they leave the system. Sales calls are all the same product. Four different sales staff, all the same. One, call, one FIFO queue feeding all sales staff. Conversion time will also be a triangular distribution of 4, 15, and 45, and then they leave the system. Order status calls also are all the same. They are handled automatically by a phone system. There is no limit on the number in a process at a time except for the trunk line limits so that they can have as many of these as possible, but it is limited by the number of trunk lines available. The conversion time is a triangular distribution of two, three, and four. And then after the conversion, 15% of the callers will opt to talk to a person. So they'll play the recording in there and 15% of the callers will say, yes, I want to speak to somebody. Of course, 85% will say, no, that's, I've achieved my goal and I'm, I can terminate the call. Those that want to opt to talk to a person will be routed to a sales staff and the conversation will last an additional time of two, three, or four minutes on the triangular distribution. Sales calls will be given a higher priority uh, than order status calls. The center can receive calls from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but they must terminate the arrival process at 6 p.m., and they must operate past 6 p.m. if necessary to flush out all calls. These are both common practices at call centers. If you call in one minute before the deadline, they will still let you into the call system, and they typically will not terminate your call in the middle of a call, even if it goes past their advertised hours. The output performance measures we want to track are the number of calls attempted, rejected, and completed. We want to track it by call type, total time and system, and then by resource, the time on hold, the number of calls on hold, and the resource utilization of personnel and trunk lines. We want to track terminating or steady state, so time frame of interest for each replication. Terminating would be specific starting or stopping conditions in this model. Uh, stopping conditions could be of several forms. They could be fixed time, count, or condition. Steady state. The output performance measures are a limit uh, as simulated time goes to infinity. And then choice usually depends on the intent of the study, not on model logic. The basic process for the modeling panels will be the highest, fast fastest modeling level, usually the place to start. For the advanced process, smaller building elements, other functions more detail. Advanced transfer will be entity movement and material handling blocks and elements, the lowest modeling level of the Simon la simulation language. It repeats some capabilities of higher level panels and some functions available only here. Other special purpose panels would be license dependent. So for the data structure, you can reuse data in several places. As long as you define it once, it is global to use for the whole model. 
You can also redefine it once, uh, modeling generality, user efficiency, that sort of thing. Uh, global variables within ARENA uh, store numbers, not formulas. You define, initialize, and variable data model for the basic process, and then you can change them during the run through the assign module. There are other ways to do it, but the assign module is the easiest. The scalar 1D array vector or 2D array our matrix are, are also global variables. Uh, global expressions are storing of formulas. It can store numbers, but those can't change as well. These are math operations, numbers, random variables, attributes, variables, etc. These would be defined in the expression data module in the advanced process, and then they can also be scalar 1D array or 2D array as well. So arrivals direct to service will create attempted calls, so we'll want an entity type of incoming call, which we can change later. The max arrivals will be the max calls and a variable initiated to uh, 999,999, just a very high number to put in to, to allow it to go as high as it can go. Um, at 6 p.m., which is 600 minutes of, after the time starts, because it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, we'll change this to a 1 to stop the arrivals. And then the entities per arrival, the calls per arrival, the variables initiated to 1, because we can only have one call per arrival. And again, at 6 p.m., or 600 minutes, we'll change it to zero so that arrivals stop. The entity data module, the incoming call entity type is already there, and for initial picture, select the picture dot black ball. The record module for an attempted call, we want to add one to a counter name attempted calls, and the results is category overview report and user specified. The decide module is, is the trunk line available? So there's a two-way condition by this. And we want to use the if-then logic function. So if it's false, we'll want to record a rejected call counter and then dispose of it. If it's true, we'll want to seize a unit of trunkline resource to be released later. That's under the resources data module for trunkline and other resource calls. We'll increment variable total WIP for the number of active calls. Again, WIP stands for work in process. And then used in stopping rule at or after 6 p.m. to sense if the system is empty. Store module to animate entity during next delay mode, module, excuse me. Add storage animation separately, identify with this logical storage by name, and then storage data module, entry made there by the store model. Delay module to listen to initial recording and then make the selection. Could have used the process model, module, but this is, this is an easier way to do so. And then unstore module to make the entity animation disappear. The decide module will have to have to determine the call type. So it's essentially a three-sided coin flip because there's a way of chance. So you'll need to add a button for more sides of the coin and then get a new exit point for each add plus one for else. Note that the probabilities are entered as percentages, not as zero to 100, not zero to one. And then the last entry, of course, is else. So it'll be if and then if not, then if, and then if not, and then of course else will be the last option. The direct call to one of the tech support sales or order status, those are the three options. Assign module, we'll want to change the entity type for separating out in results, change the entity picture for animation, and then store, delay, and unstore for recording product type selection. Decide module for product type, there's the different three-sided coin flip, and then the direct to appropriate process module for that product type. Process modules for tech support service will seize, delay, and release. We'll seize a unit from the appropriate multi-unit resource. We'll use the tech time defined in the expression data module. And then we'll proceed to the system exit logic at a later point. The assign module for sales calls, change the entity type and picture. Process module, seize, delay, release, seize a unit of sales resource. Sales calls, priority over order status calls that seek a person. So in order to set that, we'll need to do into the queue data module, the process sales call dot queue, and then you want to change that attribute. Um, the type equals lowest attribute value. So the attribute name for sales call priority. Undefined for sales calls, so that will be zero. You'll need to set it to one for order status calls that seek a person so that the zero gets picked on first. And this will be, of course, the shared queue. 
and then proceed to the system ex exit logic. The order status calls will be an assigned module. You want to change entity type and picture. Delay blocks in the block panel for RoboChat. This includes the store and unstore logic, which is an alternate to the earlier methods. The decide module, so no salesperson required, they can go directly to system exit logic. The if the salesperson is required, which is one of the options at the end there, you'll have to do the assign module and then set sales call priority attribute to one so that it gets deprioritized over sales calls. And then seize the module for the unit of sales resource using define queue name as process sales call queue shared with sales calls. And then the process module does not allow for specifying a shared queue, so we can't use this in this case here. Uh, delay for the convert conversation with the sales person and then release the unit of sales resource and then proceed to the system exit logic. And then system exit. All calls of all types come here when finished. This is the endpoint. Release module will be the release the unit of trunk line resource seized upstream. Once the call is terminated, you're of course releasing the trunk line, so it's now available again. Assign the module decrement total whip variable and then record module, increment completed calls counter, and then dispose of the call. So you're reducing the whip by one and you're increasing the completed calls by one. The arrival cutoff logic, now we need to build this in. So this is used to choke off the arrival stream at six o'clock. So to prevent people from coming in and calling afterwards, after those hours. Create a single logical or fake entity at time of 600 minutes Remember, 600 minutes is based on the start time of 8 a.m. So 600 minutes later, that is when 6 p.m. would come across. Um, just to make sure, Overkill will tell you to put in uh, 999,000 minutes, which is obviously much higher number than you would get in a practical simulation. And that's just to put as high a value as possible that you won't hit. And a max arrivals at one. You want to assign the module to set the variable max calls to one. And then recall the use of MAC calls for MAC arrivals in the create module for the attempted calls. Also, in this assign module, set calls per arrival to zero. Since create module will always schedule the next arrival, this makes the size of the next illegal arrival zero. And then dispose of this single logical entity. Now, under run setup, the replication parameters tab will be where we need to make some edits. Um, everything else should stay the same. So we want to make sure the base time units are set in minutes. The replication length will be set in infinite uh, as the default and put in the terminating condition field. We want to update the following so that the arena clock variable is 600 minutes to stop it at 6 p.m. and use the two ampersands. The total whip is zero. So we have to, we can't stop the simulation for the day until it is after that 6 p.m. time and there are no calls in inventory anymore. So for animation, we'll place three storage animations, incoming recording delay, tech call recording delay, and order status delay. Then we'll want to select the proper identifier in each from the pull-downs list. The graphic behaves like queue animations. There will be four queue animations, three tech support call types, uh, products and sales, and then they came with four process modules specifying the C's. And then resource animations for each of the three tech support types and sales resources. There are multi-unit resource animations as in the models that we have done previously. So the variable animations for WIP at the tech calls and sales. For tech calls, the arena variable is to animate as processed product type one tech call WIP etc. Use that pull down list. And then for sales calls, you must include the order status call seeking your real person. So it'd be NR for sales plus NQ, the process call, process sales call dot Q. The plot number for the trunk lines busy is NR for the trunk lines. And then labeling and background boxes as in the model logic. So the trunk lines busy the plot start at zero and then capped at 26 during the run. We'll have 734 attempted calls under the user specified section where 643 of them were completed and the other 91 were rejected. Sometimes you can see a mixture of sales and order status in the sales queue. Um, other typical outputs, times and systems separated 
out by the call type, queue length times a queue separated out by resource, and resource utilization is normalized to the zero or one by, based on capacity. Again, as you run a simulation, this is just for one day, you might get slightly different results than some of these, but you should get fairly close to them. So let's go on to model two or 5.2 and make some changes to the enhanced call center. Incoming calls arrival rate varies over the day. So instead of having a static time, we're assuming that it's all likely at any point in time or the same probability, we'll say certain types will have a higher rate of incoming calls. So we'll use a probabilistic model, um, the non-stationary Poisson process, which we would get to more in section 12 uh, dash three in the, in the textbook, but for this course, we're not gonna go into that depth here. Instead of a constant rate, we're, um, we're going to specify a rate function. So ARENA so supports a piecewise constant race function of step functions, uh, which is relatively easy to support and uh, has a rate function specification, as you can see below. So below is an example of call arrival times and calls per hour, and you can see based on the half hour point throughout the day, they have different arrival rates. This is something very common that you'll run into in the real world because very rarely is volume uniform or very consistently. Usually there are peaks and valleys that you need to account for. So we'll need to change the sales staff time variables over the day as well. So the data will be in the text below, um, the scheduled data module and the sales schedule. And we'll say that the tech support staff are actually cross-trained so they can work a different schedule and they have the ability to support different products as you see below. So this particular chart uh, will, will tell you who is capable of doing what and you'll need to design this into your model to increase that level of flexibility. So additional changes here, 4% of tech support calls cannot be handled during the call and need offline back office research. This is another realistic situation that you would run into in a call center where not all calls can be resolved in that individual time. In this case, the original call will end and the same original talk time distribution, they'll give up the trunk line, but they can't count it as complete because the inquiry or question or whatever the nature of the call was not resolved. In this case here, they will send it to the back office, which would be outside of the model bounds, and that takes an exponential distribution of 60 minutes for them to resolve. Sometimes there may need to be offline research carried out overnight and completed on a later day. In that case, the answer goes back to the same tech support person who took the original call with higher priority than original incoming calls, but still might have to queue for this person. So suppose this person had been working with a particular customer and they had to wait and they waited approximately an hour and they got the answer back. They would be the same person to go back and communicate back to the customer on the, on the resolution of it, which again is something that call centers may strive to do. At the same time, that person may be on the phone with somebody else because they're not sitting waiting for that resolution. In that case, they would have to wait until that call got terminated for them to go ahead and proceed and initiate the response to the original inquiry. The tech support person might request a trunk line for an outgoing call. Higher priority is now than it's now a higher priority than incoming calls, but they still might have to queue until uh, the talk is completed. So then we'll want to track the number of each product type after this research is done. Moving on to the data structure. For resources and schedules, there will be resource and schedule data modules. Trunk line will still be a fixed capacity of 26, mm -hmm. and sales will be on schedule of sales schedule. 11 individual tech support people on the individual schedules. However, you must fill out each schedule on all the 22 half hour periods with leading and trailing zeros if necessary. Um, this is because of that added variable that we've added with the tech support. Ignore option to avoid shifting back schedule over multiple days and then include costing data for people in the resource data module. Then define a non-stationary arrival rate function in the schedule module, arrival schedule and enter the trailing zeros in the edit via dialog or spreadsheet, not graphical schedule editor. So sets, we want to collect the same type of items together. So set and advanced data modules for basic advanced process panels and response. Um, refer to the items in the set by their original name or the index. Resource set for each tech support product type. Members are those tech support resources qualified. Individual resources are already defined in the resource data module. Overlapping membership, some resources in multiple sets. 
and then sets are ordered here in the most versatile tech support people at the bottom to save them for other calls. So if somebody is not able to handle a whole lot of calls other than type one, when a type one calls in, you want to give that person the type one first so that you don't use your more valuable resources uh, beforehand. And then you will seize them from a set in the model. So the counter set will counter one for each hour and we'll want to count the number of rejected calls in each hour. And then individual counters are already defined in the static data model and statistic data module. And then we'll use results later to decide when to increase staffing. So modifying the model. We we'll want to go under call arrivals termination and run setup. We'll create the module. The type will be schedule and the schedule name will be the arrival schedule. Delete the entire arrival cutoff section from model 5.1. So the arrival schedule will cut off arrivals at 6 p.m. Uh, via the zero. We we'll want to delete the total width variable used to terminate the model 5.1 and use the built-in NR trunk line instead of that terminating condition. We we'll want to delete assigned models modules used in, to manage the total width. And then we we'll want to record module for rejected calls. So we'll index to counters set rejected calls with an index uh, as listed below in which uh, time now over 60 plus one. So one is for that first hour, two is for the second, etc. The tech support calls will be the same as the determined product type decide. We want to add the assigned models for each product type thereafter. So the entity type to distinguish product type and reports, entity pictures to distinguish product type and animation, and then the attribute tech call type one, two, or three by product type for routing. The process modules, resources, sub dialogues, type will equal set, set the name for product one uh, and on, use those pull downs. And then selection rule equals preferred order to select earlier entries in set first. Uh, remember again that we put the most versatile tech support people first, uh, or last, excuse me, so that the, the least versatile can, can be pulled and see before them. And then save attribute will be the tech agent index. So this will be an entity attribute carried along, uh, in the case of the back office research, to send back to the same tech support person for them to respond back to the original inquiry submitter. So the back office, the return tech support calls will be all new. So we need to add the ent entry via the true branch, that 4% of the calls that cannot be resolved, in the decide module for back office research and return call. Uh, release this call's trunk line. At that point, it would become offline. And then a delay with storage for the exponential distribution of 60 minutes for the back office research. So we'll just build in the delay. Increment the tech return whip for the call type a one-dimensional variable array defined uh, as, as earlier on, in a few slides earlier. Uh, the tech call type is one, two, or three assigned in the earlier assign type. The decide module product type will be based on the entity type, and then seize the same tech support person as before and list them as a higher priority. Then we'll seize a trunk line, again at a higher priority, to make a return call. Then we'll release this trunk line and the tech, and the tech support person We'll decre decrement the tech return whip for the call type, and then we'll set the entity to re final record after that trunk line release is there. The statistic data module will be 10 counter type statistics, uh, as we've discussed earlier, and there will be four time persistent statistics to track expressions. So back office research whip to track the total number of cases in research, uh, and then the tech one total online whip stat, et cetera, to track the number of what product type in the back office expression via tech one, uh, total whip, et cetera, defined in the data module as listed below. No other changes will be needed in sales calls or order status calls section as before. So those can remain the same. For animation, now we'll go back and delete the tech one, two, and three resource animations. We want to change the variables in the three tech support WIP displays to track a total number of the tech support calls of that type present. We want a new back office storage animation variable animation for the number present, and a new queue for each tech support product type for return calls waiting in service. We want to add a resource animation from a PLB library for each individual tech support person. And then the results will want most rejected calls in hours five to eight and then increase staff at what point and by when. So now let's look at model 5.3. 
the overall call and the call center stats setup. So I want to develop overall operational cost measure. So two cost categories, staffing and resource and poor service. We want to develop an overall measure of service and the percentage of calls rejected. We want to add options for increasing staffing and improvement. And then we want to make five replications and then focus on weekly costs. The resource data module will talk about hourly costs for people, and this is where we will add those resource costs. We want to do $20 per hour for each sales staffer, and then $18 or $20 for each tech support type, depending on their skill level. So these salary costs will be paid while on duty, busy or idle, whether they're taking a call or whether they're waiting in queue, they will still get paid. So in summing, we have a cost of $12,820 per week, and view all of this existing staff as fixed costs. So we want to now increase the sales and tech support staff at noon to four time slots. So we'll add in a variable new sales equals the number of new sales staff, and we'll add in the $17 per hour, four hours per day, five days per week. So we'd add in $340 a week for each additional staff. We want to schedule the data module to add capacity, add it via dialog or spreadsheet, but not the graphical editor. And then resource sales already exists in the resource data module. The variables for the new tech, uh, one, two, three, et cetera, and new tech all for number of new tech support people qualified as, as named. So again, $16 an hour for each one product staff, $18 for each all product staff. Again, $320 a week uh, is your cost for single product staff person and then $360 for all product. And then new entries in the resource data module, uh, you can name them whatever you want. And then schedule a data module to add capacity, the dialogue or spreadsheet edit. So stat, staying with staffing and resource costs, we could maybe increase the number of trunk lines beyond 26. So maybe that's a financial option to us at a rate of $98 flat for each additional line we want to cost. So we'll want to add the define expression of new res cost for all resource costs. So new sales times 30, you can see that formula down below. This will not depend on the simulation results. This will only on setup. Uh, you can also include customer dissatisfier costs. In the real world, this is oftentimes very difficult to quantify. You can still place some what of a dart or expectation on what is the cost of a dissatisfied customer and include it within your simulation. So for these purposes in here, we'll say that these are a little bit easier to quantify uh, and, and include those in our model. So let's say we incur a cost for a caller waiting on hold past a th certain threshold. So if it's over three minutes for a tech support person, one for sales, or two minutes for order status, uh, beyond that point, we would incur a, a cost per minute, you know, for each one varying from each. And, the re you know, you could argue that sales should be higher because sales could be a lost sale. Somebody want, is on hold for more than two minutes, they're going to hang up. You may have lost that potential opportunity. Um, three new assigned modules with orange backing will accumulate the excess, the point beyond those thresholds of wait times and hold. So the tech support variable, the excess tech wait time will be increased by the max entity wait time dash three and zero. Um, so then this is a built-in arena attribute holding all wait times, including those queues. Um, and then at the end, we'll multiply those excess wait times by those costs uh, multiplied by five. Now. For such a simple model in here, you could, in theory, just get the output and multiply these by hand. But the point is to show you how you can do this within Arena because this is a simplified version. And in the reality is, if you're using this for much more complex analytical modeling, you would have a lot more of these that you'd want to build in without having to go do this analysis offline. So the statistic data module, total cost entry for overall output measures, will do a type output commuted only at the end of replication. So we'll put in the new res cost as listed below. We'll use a statistic data module for the percent rejected entry. Entry. This will be a counter of total rejected calls and accumulates in the record module and call arrival area. Um, the type will be an output of 100 times the total of rejected calls divided by the number of attempted calls. So replication conditions, run setup and replication parameters, and we'll initialize between those replications. The statistics and system details will be included in the text. We will not get into that detail here. 
Um, also, run setup and project parameters will be turned off, but all costing statistics collection just for speed, um, the costing required to get the entity dial wait time if, for that piece there. So results. So running at this for five replication gives us a base case uh, of with no additional staff and still at 26 trunk lines. We have a total cost of $22,242.55 plus or minus $1,439.47. We have a rejected rate of just shy of 12%, plus or minus 1.39%. If we were to add three of each of the five staff types and three more trunk lines, our total cost would go up slightly, $23,683.35, but it would be much more consistent because uh, it would be plus or minus $616. And the percent rejected would go way down, which obviously makes sense because you have more lines and you have more staff. And so the rejected would be 1.61 plus or minus 1.52%. In chapter six, again, which we won't get into here, this goes into more about statistically valid experiments uh, for precision and different alternates as well. Um, if you go on and take more advanced modeling in, in future courses, which I, I certainly encourage you to do, these are just kind of giving you a little bit of a perspective of what some of those additional features could do. So now let's look at model 5-4 for the inventory simulation setup. So this is a different kind of model. This is not queuing. This is using blocks and elements panels exclusively and the Simon simulation language. In this case here, we're essentially doing this to uh, demonstrate this capability. And then this could be done with higher level panels we just discussed uh, if, if we wanted to go that route. So in this case here, we'll assume that a company carries a single discrete item uh, of inventory. We'll call it just widgets here. The I of T, the inventory level, is an integer. So at time T, days past the beginning of the simulation, that's how much inventory they have. And we want to run the simulation for 120 round-the-clock days. So the customer demands against the inventory. Uh, the customer in arrival times will be an exponential distribution of 0.1 per day around the clock. And the first arrival time will not put it at time zero, but we'll put it as an after the end arrival time past zero. So the demand size will be a discrete random variable. So one, two, three, or four uh, with, with different probabilities for each. So assuming they can't have order 1.5, which is they have to order one or two. If enough items are physically on hand in inventory to satisfy the demand, the customer gets the demand and leaves. If the demand exceeds the number of items that you have in inventory, the customer gets what is there and the rest is considered backlogged or back ordered. In that case, your inventory would show as negative. So again, if you have a negative inventory already and there's more demand, you would just show it as more negative and show it as a greater backlog. So the take inventory will be just past midnight of each day. So at exactly time 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 119. So two managerial chosen constant integers of s equals 20 and s equals 40. And then we'll do, if your inventory is greater than this, uh, do nothing until the next inventory evaluation exactly one day later, 24 hours. If it's less than this, we'll order, we'll order that many uh, from the suppliers. So uh, order that large S that minus the number of inventories uh, to get your inventory up to that uh, desired inventory level. If the order does not arrive instantly from a supplier, but after the delivery lag, um, we'll want to do so sometime during the last half of the day in ordering. In reality, this is oftentimes how inventory and, and inventory fulfillment work. Just because you order it, you may get it at a certain point of the day very consistently. You may not get it at a uniform time all throughout within that time period. So the cost structure. We'll look at the average ordering cost per day. We'll say that placing an order costs you a fixed cost of $32 uh, plus an incremental cost of $3 per item. And then if no order is placed at the beginning of the day, there's no order cost, not even a fixed cost. So just to place an order costs you $32. And then you have to pay a per unit base on top of that. If you don't place, if you buy one thing, you only have to pay that base plus the one. If you don't buy anything at all, you don't have to pay anything. Um, at the end of the simulation, we'll divide the total order cost by 120. The average holding cost per day will be whenever the inventory is greater than zero, we'll want to incur a $1 per day item per day per item on hand. When people look at inventory, um, 
people oftentimes think, well, more inventory is better, but the reality is inventory degrades and inventory costs you money in order to just hold and warehouse it. So we're going to incur costs on this so that you don't drive your inventory up too high. And then average shortage cost, again, will cost you as well because if you don't have product, you're potentially back ordering, you might have expedited shipping, or there might be product and design considerations that you have to handle, whether it's contractual or whatever to your supplier. Uh, so whenever your inventory goes negative, you will incur a $5 per day uh, item per backlog. So you want to have enough to cover your backlog, but you don't want to have so much that you're spending money just to carry it. During periods when the inventory is zero, there's no cost. So if you have no backlog and no inventory, you're not incurring any costs. Um, your overall performance measure will be your average total cost per day, and then the sum of average ordering, holding, and shortage cost per day. Don't evaluate the inventory at time 120. Uh, we might order and incur an ordering cost then, but the order will, of course, never arrive. And then uh, as an exercise, you know, we're, we're kind of fudging this here, but uh, as an exercise, we'll ask you to do it properly. So the data structure. We'll use blocks and elements panels exclusively, even for variables, expressions, attributes, entities, statistics, collection, and run control. The variables element will initialize it or default to zero. So your inventory level IT changes during the run and initializes at 60, that'll be a starting point. Our little s will be 20 and our big s will be 40. Total ordering costs will be accumulator, setup cost 32, incremental cost three, unit holding cost one, unit shortage cost five, and the days to run will be 119.9999 because you can't get all the way to 120, so we'll run the decimal out so it gets right up until that point. So expressions element will want to define the inter-demand time, demand size, evaluation, interval, and delivery lag. The attributes and entities elements, just to define them, want to project and replicate elements will be similar to run setup. And then dstats element will request accumulation of intervals for total holding and shortage costs. So the outputs element will want two entries, both of data type output so that they're executed only at the end of the run and reported average ordering costs computed, and then average total costs added up. Uh, o value returns the most recent value, and the DAVG returns the time persistent average. So the logic for the customer demands, we'll need to create a block for the arrival. So the entity type is customer. They use inter-demand time expression, and then the first creation after an inter-demand time. Assign a block to de decrement inventory level by a demand size. Again, demand size was defined as an expression and backlogging naturally happens. And then dispose of the block for customer exit. So if backlogged is accounted for automatically in the simple definition and tracking of an inventory level. The inventory evaluation, you'll want to create a block for the inventory evaluator entities. For first creation at time zero is the evaluate inventory at the start of the run. And the interval is evaluation interval defined in the expression. The branch block is somewhat like the decide module. To determine whether to place the order now, we'll add branches and each evaluated as true or false. We'll clone of incoming entities sent out along each true branch, but at most the branch number, the max number of branches will be sent out. Um, so if we set the max number of branches to one, the default is, is infinity. The first branch uh, of type if, if true, we want to order. The second branch of type else is if true, it means the first branch was false, so we don't. So it's if and else. Now placing an order. If we exit the branch block via the top if branch, that it must be that inventory is less than your lower inventory value, so we want to order back up to that larger inventory, that larger s. So the assign block will define order quantity attribute and then increment total order and cost variable. Delay block for delivery lag, and then assign block to increment inventory level by the order quantity, and then dispose block. So for animation, you'd want to plot separate in the black and in the red curves. In the black, of course, would be uh, positive inventory, and in the red, would be negative. You could also do a pair of level thermometer animations. In that case, the negative direction downward would be considered in the red, and then the higher in the graph and the thermometer, the more positive your values are. This concludes our discussion on advanced modeling.